Hello, so this is the process of doing some visual development for my comic, Langford Cove. I did this painting of the saloon, which I've decided is a saloon slash apothecary because the character who owns it is a witch, so I wanted to give it some more character. So I'm just going to talk about my process and a little bit about what I, how I think visual development should go and, you know, building a world and that kind of stuff. So, um, I did the initial sketch digitally to get the perspective right, because I wanted to use some of the perspective tools, because I need some practice with that. And then I printed it out, and I sketched all of the other details on top of the digital printout. And then you can see I'm using my light box to trace uh, all that stuff onto my watercolor paper, which was very exciting and took a lot longer when I was um, editing this, I had to cut out cut it down quite a lot. So I ended up kind of finishing it out not without the light box because it was easier to just copy it than to try and see all of the details. And then after that I start to go in with the watercolors which is the fun part. Um, I really wanted to try and get a, an interesting lighting effect with the light coming through the window so I decided that all of the objects in the front would be really really dark and then on the right side of the bar would also be dark so I used my Payne's gray initially to like make that first shadow layer and I'm kind of starting to do that now and then I ended up just kind of layering everything else on top of it and then I used at the end my brown ink Higgins ink to um, do the line work so doing backgrounds is something that you always kind of hear artists or I hear my other artist friends complain that they don't know how to do because everybody always wants to draw characters, which, you know, makes sense because drawing characters are fun. Um, but I always really like movies and shows that have a really rich world and have really interesting settings and um, backgrounds and stuff like that. But you don't really like pay attention to all the details when you're watching those. So trying to make a, a world that feels rich and full can be difficult because you have to think of all the little details to add and then drawing those details can be very meticulous. So for instance I wanted this um, saloon to be kind of cluttered because there's a lot of concept art and visual development art that I've seen with rooms that just have like shelves full of things and I just love that look in those artworks and I wanted to do that but you know, drawing a whole bunch of bottles is kind of boring and doing all that line work, I just get impatient and rushed and it ends up looking messy. So I really had to like discipline myself and kind of try and go slow to add all of the things in the shelves that I wanted. And I also had to like pull back and remind myself that less is more. I don't need to have everything be intricately painted and shaded and have every little detail and every little thing because, you know, your eye doesn't need to see all those details to get the idea because um, I'm looking at the whole picture and not just like one bottle. If you hear a weird crinkling sound it's because the cat is chewing on some tape on my desk so that's what's happening over there. Anyway, um, but it was really fun to try and think of things to go on the shelves and I also wanted to make it look like a space that's used so I didn't want all of the bar stools, forgot the word I was looking for there. I didn't want all the bar stools to be like all in a row. Um, but I also didn't want to get, cause I've, I've drawn, I've drawn this, um, saloon for, for my comic digitally. And I, I think I got a little overwhelmed adding things in the foreground and I didn't want to mess up the perspective. So I tried to only add a couple and plus I wanted the bar itself to kind of be the focus. So I only added the table and the crate in the front to be anchors. Um, I like pictures that have a sense of depth. I like drawing images that have a really crisp foreground and differentiated background and midground and all that stuff. Um, but I feel like I kind of use that as a crutch sometimes for actually doing perspective in things. So that's why I really took the time to uh, make a perspective grid and do all the lines and do all that stuff digitally so it would actually be correct. Another thing that was difficult about this painting was getting um, the color studies and stuff right. I'm trying to, you know, not go overboard on colors because you want to have a cohesive painting. But one thing that's difficult about my comic, Langford Cove, is that 
it's a Wild West setting, so everything's brown pretty much. I know I don't have to make it all brown, but most of like the materials of things that I want it to be, like they would have wood, they would have stone. Um, so it was pretty much brown. There's gray stones, but you know, whatever. So I didn't want the bar and the floor to be exactly the same, because that would be lame. So I had to try and get those different tones of brown without making it too crazy and going too saturated or too muddy or, you know, whatever. So I did a few uh, color studies um, in my sketchbook and tried to figure that out. And the main thing that I, I wanted to get down was where the light was falling and, you know, which areas are very dark and which are not. And I decided on going for the Payne's Gray to be basically the shadow color. And I think it worked out being pretty cohesive, making the um, bar really warm and those shadows cooler without it being too cool. And then the last thing is line art. And I know it's kind of unusual to do line art last, um, but I just really don't like doing just line art and spending forever on it because I get bored. And then I'm not as motivated to make things look good painting because I feel like I'm just coloring in the lines. I really like other artwork, artists who do very, very clean light work, or line work, sorry, but I just, I don't like doing it very much, and I've, from my experimenting with watercolor and with, like, my comic style and stuff, I've enjoyed using lines to, like, finish out the shape and add some extra contrast, and I guess it's kind of a crutch for not, like, painting fully realistically, but a comic isn't supposed to be fully realistic, and I'm trying to teach myself to hold back a little bit from just painting and shading and shading and going, you know, super in, which was kind of a struggle on this piece, um, because I wanted to, but I know it's not realistic to fully paint every single panel of the comic, so I feel like this is probably a little bit more finished than a comic panel would be, but, um, it's for the visual development purpose as well, is to get the idea of the setting and to have a basis of what this location looks like so whenever I draw it again I can go back and look at this painting and say what are, what are the colors in here, what does everything look like, and um, keep everything cohesive. Kind of like a model sheet but for the setting, right? So um, the only thing I wish I could change is planning the colors for the actual shelves and stuff in the bar more and like those swirly bits I kind of started making up adding shadows and stuff in there and it ended up being a little bit muddy and weird and the swirls aren't the same size and stuff like that and I wish that the skull on the top well the skull's okay but um I wanted the back behind the skull to kind of be like old grayish cedar posts um very gnarly and stuff like that but it doesn't really come through all that much because I, I added more detail to the swirls, which is a little bit unnecessary, and I could have left it. I also wish that the plants were a little bit more crisp, but I was afraid about adding green in the middle of all of that red and things. But overall, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm excited to try some other visual development for the comic, Langford Cove. If you want to read what I have up already for Langford Cove, it's on Tapas. I was going to say tapastic. It's not tapastic anymore, but tapas.io slash uh, links for cove. I'll put a link in the description. Basically, I did the first half of the episode for my senior capstone project, and I did all that digitally. And then this past summer, I realized I really, 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 really like watercolor, and it kind of matches more of the storybook uh, painterly feel that I really want to have for this world. So I decided to take a break from the digital stuff and work on improving my style, improving my skills and stuff, and developing a look for the comic in watercolor. So I'm working on this lookbook project, and that's what this is part of. I have um, some images of my main character, Lucia, as well, which are on my portfolio and Instagram, which I can link if you want to see in the description. Um, and basically, I'm going to be working on some more locations and some panel tests and turnarounds for characters and um, outfits for all the characters. I just realized that I've been like rotating in my chair while I'm talking, so if my audio is weird, that's why. Also, um, my camera setup is pretty bad at the moment, 
So sorry for all the weird cuts and lighting changes in the footage. Uh, I'm going to work on getting a better setup. The issue is that I want to paint on my table at an angle and not flat, but we'll get it worked out. So if you watched all of this and listen to me ramble, thanks for watching and listening. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook and Tumblr if you want to see more. And I'll be back again with another video soon. Thanks. Bye.